In the last congressional hearing, why was SEC Chair Gary Gensler ducking question after question? Furthermore, a recent research report from South Korea's Manji University shed light on the predictability and dynamics of cryptocurrency returns, with a focus on XRP, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. Finally, the XRP community is abuzz with conjecture and rumors about XRP's inclusion in the United States Federal Reserve's fast payment system, FedNow, but how convinced are we of these reports? Continue reading to the end to find out more. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in, make sure to watch this new video right now. Hello and welcome to our channel, where we discuss the newest XRP news and the cryptocurrency world in general. If you are watching one of our videos for the first time, we will gladly offer you a special greeting. We encourage you to enable notifications so you never miss any video. We are pleased to announce that this channel is hosting a 200 XRP giveaway. To be eligible to participate, simply subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment with the hashtag XRP. The winner will be notified on September 30th. According to Crypto Airy, Spenthebits won a contest hosted by Ripple. Spenthebits, in particular, has emerged as a winner in Ripple's 2023 Central Bank Digital Currency Innovation Challenge. Spenthebits competed, according to Crypto Airy, by delivering a retail solution tailored exclusively for regional banks and money service firms. Furthermore, she stated that Spenthebits' XRPL-based solution was designed to meet the specific needs of financial institutions. The platform, in particular, provides MSBs with a streamlined method of delivering cross-border payments and managing associated ledgers. It also gives them additional features to improve their operations. As previously reported, Spenthebits won Ripple's 2022 CBDC Innovate competition. Interestingly, the XRP community has already claimed that the project would be among the 2023 edition winners within the next two months. Notably, Spenthebits declared victory. Spenthebits has triumphed once more at CBDC Innovate 2023, securing back-to-back -back wins. The X platform enthused in a recent post. Spenthebits expressed genuine gratitude to the esteemed judges who recognized their contributions. It also appreciated the XRP community's continued support and effort. Furthermore, Spenthebit stated that the collective. The XRP community's efforts paved the road for innovation in the crypto and blockchain spheres. The 2023 hackathon took place from May 15 to August 18, 2023, according to Ripple's CBDC page. Notably, 1,217 people fought for a top prize of $200,000. The competing projects must update or construct a fintech payment solution leveraging Ripple's CBDC infrastructure, according to the guidelines. Spenthebits was named a prize among 15 other platforms. It is worth noting that the first phase winners will compete in a winners-only Phase 2 tournament. Please remember to subscribe to our channel and press the notification bell to be the first to receive new updates. About the latest occurrences of XRP. Stuart Alderodi, the chief legal officer, CLO of blockchain company Ripple, is the latest to comment on Gary Gensler, the chairman of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission's recent congressional testimony. Stuart Alderodi, the chief legal officer, CLO, of blockchain company Ripple is the latest to comment on Gary Gensler, the chairman of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission's recent congressional testimony. Alderodi has been the driving force behind Ripple's legal fight against the regulatory agency. Depending on whether XRP is classified as a security under U.S. federal law, the Ripple CLO was less thrilled with the SEC chairman's responses to Congress on related crucial matters, such as what constitutes security under U.S. law. During the hearing, the SEC chair smugly evaded question after question given by multiple congressmen, according to Alta Rodi. However, the Ripple CLO singled out a point when Rep. Richie Torres, who represents New York's 15th congressional district, questioned concerns about the SEC chair. During the hearing on Wednesday, Rep. Torres voiced worry that the SEC has widened its definition of an investment contract to include anything the agency deems to be an investment contract. As a result, his queries to the SEC chair revolved around an investment contract 
particularly with the SEC adopting the principle as a foundation. To claim that almost all cryptocurrencies are securities, the famed Howey test, which the SEC has often referenced as the basis for its securities-related crypto actions, such as those against Ripple and Coinbase, was examined by the New York Rep. Richie Torres also cited August research by six law professors, including a Yale University professor, demonstrating that no Supreme Court decision has ever found that a scheme that does not involve a contract between two parties can qualify as an investment contract. When asked if any previous Supreme Court rulings had concluded that an investment contract may be regarded without an actual contract, the SEC chair hesitated to respond. Instead, Gary Gensler eventually dodged the topic, saying he would leave the answer to the very fine SEC attorneys in front of courts. Meanwhile, Rep. Richie Torres said Gensler's failure to answer the question is baffling, given that the SEC has initiated legal action against crypto-related firms based on the investment contract basis. Time will tell whether other crypto companies at odds with the SEC will follow Rep. Richie Torres' logic in future court hearings. In addition, the study named InSample. The study, titled InSample and Out-of-Sample Predictability of Cryptocurrency Returns, made its findings using XRP, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. And Out-of-Sample Predictability of Cryptocurrency Returns made their conclusions using XRP, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. The paper was published by the University in Volume 27 of the East Asian Economic Review. Notably, it attempted to ascertain how several external factors, such as the US dollar index, DIGXY, and gold prices could influence cryptocurrency pricing. Rathof Kamen, a notable figure in the XRP community, recently tweeted about the news. Notably, the study offered data on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP daily closing prices and constantly compounded gains. It examined data from November 2017 to June 2023, yielding 1,415 observations. Furthermore, log returns on the three assets were used as dependent variables in the study. It used asset-specific and non-asset-specific characteristics as regressors in forecasting return regressions. The study's findings found that, both within the sample and when applied to data outside the sample, in the sample, Bitcoin trading volume repeatedly appeared as the best reliable indicator for anticipating cryptocurrency profits. It contended that as market concerns loom, investors' demand for XRP, Bitcoin, and Ethereum rises, and that this higher demand boosts asset returns. Meanwhile, after conducting extensive research on cryptocurrency pricing, the study concluded that XRP, Bitcoin, and Ethereum exhibited severe volatility. During the sampling period, it further stated that daily trade volumes peaked at significant levels, with Bitcoin reaching $1.62 billion in December 2017. In May 2021, Ethereum reached $2.13 billion. The report, on the other hand, stated that XRP reached its greatest daily trading amount of $3.98 billion in May 2021. The analysis also stated that the distribution of returns for Bitcoin and Ethereum was biased to the left, but returns for XRP were skewed to the right. Simply said, the skewness of Bitcoin and Ethereum distribution returns indicates a higher concentration of negative returns. The return distribution for XRP, on the other hand, has a higher concentration of positive returns. Furthermore, the study found that the estimations of Gold and DXI were negative in XRP return prediction regressions as they were in Ethereum. Nonetheless, they were not statistically significant. According to the report's conclusions, XRP, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, could be used as a risk management asset against the US dollar or gold when investors wanted to hedge against market risks. Now for the big question of the day. Will the U.S. Federal Reserve now use XRP? Is XRP used by FedNow? Please remember to subscribe to our channel and press the notification bell to be the first to receive updates on the newest XRP developments. A screenshot provided by a pseudonymous community influencer reignited the rumor. Captain XRP According to the screenshot, XRP would facilitate the blockchain component of the FedNow payment service.
Wrath of Common, WOK, a notable XRP community personality, promptly clarified the matter. Wok came to Twitter to refute the rumors, declaring unequivocally, the Fed is not about to use XRP. He criticized the information source, a non-sourced piece from Cryptonomist. Wok went on to say that just because something is online doesn't mean it's true. He emphasized the importance of the source of any information. Another XRP community member offered his opinion, claiming that while the Federal Reserve considered Ripple and XRP, they never intended to use it for FedNow. Wok acknowledged this, noting that he was unsure about the extent of the Federal Reserve's crypto research in the United States. He agreed that Ripple's involvement in the Faster Payments Task Force was noteworthy, but emphasized that it did not suggest they would become the new infrastructure. A forum member also inquired whether Woke believed Ripple's partners were using XRP for FedNow. No, said the powerful community figure. He went on to say that FedNow does not use XRP in its architecture and that any link between Ripple's ODL partners and FedNow is distinct from FedNow running on XRP. It is worth noting that the first screenshot published by XRP Captain contained an excerpt from an article implying that XRP would play a role in the FedNow blockchain. However, upon deeper inspection, it was discovered that this piece came from the media organization Cryptonomist and lacked any trustworthy source to back up the claim. While several XRP community influencers have reinforced the idea that FedNow will employ XRP, as of the time of this publication, these assertions remained unverified, with no trustworthy source confirming their reality. In contrast, prominent personalities like Airy have openly refuted the assertions. Furthermore, the absence of any mention of XRP or Ripple on the FedNow website is significant. It is worth noting, however, that the Federal Reserve chose Hedera's blockchain-based payments technology, DROP, as a service provider. For the FedNow system, the only connection between Ripple and FedNow was made in February, when the Federal Reserve included Volante Technologies, a Ripple partner in the payment systems trial program. Make sure you enjoy the video and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. This is quite beneficial to my understanding of the YouTube algorithm. Also, by sharing this video with as many people as possible, you may help enlighten others just as you have been enlightened. Let's spread this news everywhere, guys. If you are a true cryptocurrency enthusiast, don't miss any of our stuff. See you tomorrow to discuss the newest news that affects us all as a community.